Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to do Unit 4, Lesson 6, more work with similar figures. So in the last lesson we introduced the idea of similar figures. You know, this idea that if you take something like a triangle and you do a dilation on it, right, then what will happen is you'll produce another triangle whose all, all the lengths of that triangle have been scaled according to the dilation constant, but whose angles are exactly the same. All right, we're going to work with that idea more today and let's get right into it in exercise number one where we review some very important facts. So here we go. Recall that when two figures are similar, their corresponding sides are proportional. They have equal ratios to one another. So exercise number one. In the diagram below, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Letter A. Use algebra and good choices of va on variables to find the missing sides of triangle DEF. Show your work. All right, so let, let's talk about that like and good choices uh, on variables. All right, so we, we're missing two sides on triangle DEF, right? What we don't want to do is call them both X or both Y or both N or whatever variable you love, right? Because in algebra generally, the rule is once you have one thing be, let's say, X, you can't let a different quantity also be X unless for some strange reason it's exactly the same quantity, right? Like, like the two lengths of an isosceles triangle that are equal. All right, so let's together do the following. Let's just call side DE, let's call that X, and let's call side DFY. And if you want to call one of them A and one of them B or one of them M and one of them N or whatever, you can do that. But don't call them the same thing. All right. So now let's review how we solve for one of these missing sides together and then we'll have you do one of them on your own. So let's, let's, let's come up with side X. Now, right, DE corresponds to side AB. All right. Likewise, side EF corresponds to side BC. So I can do the following. I can say 21 divided by 14, 21 divided by 14 must be equal to x divided by 10. All right. Now we can cross multiply to solve this and bring out my calculator to kind of give me some help here. I'm going to cross multiply 14x, 21 times 10, I can do that one in my head, is 210. I can now divide both sides by 14, and we find x is equal to, let's do 210 divided by 14, x is equal to 15. All right, so we know that side DE is equal to 15. I'd like you to pause the video now and solve for the length of side DF. Go ahead. All right, let's go through it. Let me take a little line like this. So we're going to do exactly the same approach. We're going to say 21 divided by 14 is equal to y divided by 6. This is what it means for the sides to be proportional. And that's what it means to have a really poorly drawn y. So now we're going to have 21 times 6 and 14 times y. 21 times 6, again, I'll just do that quickly in my head, is 126. But now, in order to solve this, we'll divide both sides by 14. And we'll find y is equal to 126 divided by 14 gives me 9. All right, great. Let me just move this out of the way. And maybe move this out of the way and scroll down some. All right, let's see. What do we have as a mistake here? Do we have a mistake here? 21, uh, three halves, three halves, three halves. Everything looks good. Um, so let's, let's keep going, all right? So in letter B, it says find each of the following ratios in simplest form. All right, find each of the following ratios in simplest form. So what we want to do is we want to take each one of these ratios that's laid out, we want to use the measurements that we have up here, 
and we want to just kind of fill them in and then write these ratios in simplest form. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and see what each one of these ratios is equal to and make sure to reduce them to simplest form. Pause the video now. All right, now by the way, one thing I want you to pay attention to as we write these ratios is that we're doing ratios, if you will, within a triangle. So for instance, the ratio of AC to BC, right? AC to BC is gonna be the ratio of six to 14. All right, and of course I can reduce 6 fourteenths by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by two, and that's gonna get me 3 sevenths. On the other hand, the ratio of DF to EF, which is DF9 to EF21, right? Also sticking within that, DF to EF, I can divide both of that, those numbers by three, and interestingly enough, I get the same ratio, three sevenths. Let's take a look at another one. AB to BC, AB to BC. Well, AB is 10, BC is 14, so we have 10 fourteenths. And again, just like before, I can reduce both of those by a factor of two, and I'll get five sevenths. On the other hand, DE to EF, right, in that case, we've got DE, which is 15, to EF, which is 21, so I've got 15 to 21. I can divide both of those by three, and that will be, huh, again, the ratio five sevenths. And finally, right, we've got AC divided by AB. AC is six, AB is 10, so we're gonna have six divided by 10, which when I reduce each one of those by two, we're gonna have three-fifths. And DF divided by DE, DF is nine, DE is 15, so 9 fifteenths, divide both of those by three, and we have three fifths. Now, this is not a coincidence. And in fact, let's take a look at just that first case, AC divided by BC and DF divided by EF. All right, AC, let's see, divided by BC. AC divided by BC, if you will, the, the side that's on the left of this triangle divided by the bottom is 3 sevenths. Then DF divided by EF, again, if you will, the side on the left side of the triangle divided by the bottom gives us exactly the same number, all right? And we could do that for each one of those cases. What these are called are relatively positioned sides, relatively positioned side. So if I divide the left side of the triangle by its bottom, I get the same as dividing the left by its bottom. If I divide the right by its bottom, I get the same as if I divide the right by its bottom. And if I divide the left by the right, I get the same as if I divide the left by the right. And that's what we're getting at in letter C. What do you notice about the ratio of relatively positioned sides from B? Well, let's just write them down. They are equal. So this is, this is very similar to when we looked at the ratio of corresponding sides. Those were also equal. But now we look at the ratio of relatively positioned sides, right? And again, this is as we're working sort of within the triangle, right? Ah, the left divided by the bottom on this triangle is equal to the left divided by the bottom on this triangle. Or the left divided by the right on this triangle is equal to the left divided by the right on this triangle. The ratios of relatively positioned sides in two similar triangles are equal. And we're gonna be playing around with that in the rest of this lesson. So, let's keep looking. For similar figures, the ratios of relatively positioned sides will always be equal to one another. Exercise number two. In the diagram below, triangle MNP is similar to triangle QRS. State the value of each of the following ratios. All right, so this is kind of tricky, right? Because we want QS divided by RS. We want QS divided by RS. But we don't have, we don't have the lengths of either one of those sides. We don't have the length of QS, we don't have the length of RS. 
But because this triangle and this triangle are similar, QS divided by RS, if you will, maybe the side on the, you know, the right or the top, it divided by the side on the bottom, will be equal to the side on the top divided by the side on the bottom. And I'm going to actually write this out. QS divided by RS must be equal to MP divided by NP, which is 11 eighths. All right, so literally this divided by this has to be equal to this divided by this. Now it might be 22 divided by 16 or 33 divided by uh, 24, et cetera. But ultimately speaking, if you reduced whatever that ratio is, it would have to be equal to 11 eighths. See if you can figure out what the ratio of QR to QS must be. All right, well, QR divided by QS must be equal to MN divided by MP. And we can say that MN divided by MP is 5 elevenths. This is an amazingly important idea, right? And it's, it's very similar, right, no pun intended, it's very similar to the idea of the ratios of corresponding sides being equal, but that's when you look at like the two triangles and you say, well, if I take the short side here and divide it by the short side here, I'll have the long side divided by the long side. Here we're making that comparison within the triangles. Oh, this side divided by this side must be equal to this side divided by that side. And it's nice because it gives us a lot of flexibility when we're setting up problems and solving for missing sides in similar triangles or other similar figures. In fact, let's play around with that in the next exercise. Here we go, exercise number three. In the diagram below, triangle ABC is similar to triangle MNP. We would, like to find the la we would like to find the length of side MP labeled as the variable X in the picture. Letter A says set up a ratio using corresponding side pairs that could be solved for X. Solve it for X by cross multiplying. All right, so this is the way that we've been doing it, right? I want to figure out what X is and I'm going to use corresponding side pairs. So the way I do that, right, the way I have been doing it is I've been saying, well, look, if I take 12 and I divide it by 18, right, if I take 12 and divide it by 18, that should give me the same thing as if I take X and I divide it by 15. Now, of course, I can solve that by cross multiplying. All right, and that's going to give me 18X is equal to, let's bring our calculator out to make the uh, 12 times 15 easy. 12 times 15 gives me 180. All right, and then I'll divide both sides by 18. And that I don't need a calculator for. X will equal 10. So that's the approach that we took in the last lesson, which was just recognizing that the ratio of corresponding sides or corresponding side pairs are equal. On the other hand, let's also solve for x, spoiler alert, it's going to be 10, let's also solve for x by doing relatively positioned sides. And here's how we do that, right? In that case, we do the following. We'd say, well, if I take this side, x, and I divide it by 12, I'm going to get exactly the same thing as if I do this side, 15, and divide it by 18. All right? So. I can do x divided by 12 is equal to 15 divided by 18. And again, this is the idea of saying something like, well, if I take the side on the left and I divide it by the side on the bottom, I'm going to get the same thing as if I take the side on the left and I divide it by the side on the bottom. Now, all it does, all it really takes is even drawing sort of the cross multiplication diagram in for you to realize these are going to be equal, right? Because if I actually do this kind of like oval circling, I already see I'm going to get 18 times x, which is what I had up here, right, equals 12 times 15. So literally at this point, everything else works out the same. 18 times x is 180, and x is 10, right? There's really no reason to go through the algebra. Now, it's going to be kind of rare that you would ever have a problem, you know, where they'd literally say to you, you must use this approach or you must use this approach. Or, you must solve this with corresponding side pairs or you must solve this with relatively positioned side pairs. All right, 
One of the nice things is that you've got this flexibility, right? Whether or not you want to stay within the triangle and go, oh, this divided by this equals this divided by this, or whether you want to kind of work with the corresponding pairs like, ah, oh, 15 divided by x is going to be 18 divided by 12, right? Either way, the approach is going to work. So let's keep going and working with this a little bit more. Exercise number four. In the following diagram, triangle EFG is similar to triangle QRS. Set up and solve a ratio to find the value of x. Use a ratio of relatively positioned sides. Okay, so we're going to continue to kind of give you this like, ah, try this approach, try that approach, just so that you, you kind of get practice with both of them. But let's, let's try to find x by using the ratio of relatively positioned sides. That means kind of sticking within the same triangle. Pause the video now and go ahead and try to set this up. All right, so if I'm sticking within the same triangle, then I might do something like this. Now keep in mind, you really want that pair of corresponding sides that are, that are equal, that you, know, that, that you know the lengths of. So sticking within the same triangles, relatively positioned sides, I can say x divided by 15 is equal to 8 divided by 10. x divided by 15 is equal to 8 divided by 10. Now you might say, well, why, why wouldn't you do 15 divided by x is equal to 10 divided by 8? You could totally do it that way. You'd get exactly the same answer. It would all kind of come out in the wash with the cross multiplying. But I'm going to stick with the x divided by 15 equals 8 divided by 10. And let's solve that. x divided by 15 is equal to 8 divided by 10. Let's cross multiply. That's going to give me 10x is equal to 8 times 15. Let's clear this out. 8 times 15. Come on. Should be 120. Yep. And divide both sides by 10. That I don't need my calculator on. And x will be 12. Label that on my picture. Now, letter B asks us to kind of go back to our original technique and set up and solve a ratio to find the value of y. Use a ratio of corresponding sides. Okay, so now I want to like set up a proportion, right, that involves the corresponding sides to solve for y. See if you can do that. All right, so corresponding sides, let me uh, kind of go back up here, right? Corresponding sides, now I'm going to kind of skip from triangle to triangle. In other words, I might say that y divided by 9 is equal to 10 divided by 15, right? So that's the corresponding sides. y corresponds to 9. So y divided by its corresponding side, 9, is equal to 10 divided by its corresponding side, 15. So 9 divided, y divided by 9 is equal to 10 divided by 15. So let's cross multiply. We're going to get 15y is equal to 9 times 10. That's 90. Let's divide both sides by 15. That's simple enough. I think I can do that one in my head. y is equal to 6. All right, and that is it. So two different approaches to find missing sides of triangles, you know, that are similar to one another, right? And it is really rather kind of cool on that. All right, let's wrap this up. So today we worked with more work with similar figures. Now the key with working more with similar figures was what we learned that the ratio of relatively positioned sides are equal to one another, all right? Um, and using this, right, we can then solve for missing sides. Now granted, we can also use the approach typically of the ratios of corresponding sides being equal to each other, all right? Whichever one seems more natural to us, we can certainly use, but we want to understand both ideas. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.